what did Dwayne Haskins have? You know what I mean? Did Dwayne Haskins have anything? And then he just got lucky, basically, and some guy just didn't stop when he no. should have. Damn. Something, no, killed. this was this was a story. Um, Steelers, one of the Steelers' backup quarterbacks was killed. He was hit on a, um, a highway. I, I want to say it was Miami, was it not? Regardless, it doesn't matter where. The Dolphins, yeah. I mean, also think of how bad you have to be as a quarterback to be the backup. Steelers quarterback. <laughs> like you don't even get the starting yeah. job. I mean, think about that. This guy was saying that he was just wandering down the street. I think so, there was some kind of mental. It's not like his car broke down and he got out. the The guy who called nine one one before he got hit was like, "There's this guy just walking down the street in this middle of this highway." So, wow. I don't know why, but I'm sure there was more to it than just being unlucky and being hit. Relatively mentally unstable, so I, I have a shot at that one day. Maybe just walking down the middle of the road and bam. Well, yeah, I, I could see either one of us turning that corner. <laughs> Wouldn't shock me. I really don't want to grow too old with all the with a bunch of complications. I you know I, I just don't want that. I you know just don't want that at all. Well, you know, how many? When that used to be suicidal, I got over wanting to kill myself, and now I'm just like, well, I might as well now. Hey, you know, I was onto something when I was young. <laughs> what is your limit of things that you want to deal with before I have to smother you with a my pillow? <laughs> No, don't do my pillow. God, I hate that guy, that Mike Lindell. A crackhead, <laughs> by the way. The, isn't that weird? You know, Matt Gates, the ecstasy, all these conservatives. A lot of these guys are fucking nuts. They really they're just nuts. They're well, fucking nuts. I think any politician is there's something inherently wrong. Because let's be honest, I mean, it's all about manipulating people. These people are probably the worst fucking scumbags in our society, <laughs> but yet they rise to power because they know how to scare the shit out of people and manipulate stupid people. <laughs> that's my view on politicians. That's, so, a pretty, that's a pretty good view. Yeah. I mean, when was the last noble politician you saw in this country? I don't know. It is funny that people that talk like that, and then they'll be like, well, that's why we got to like DeSantis. <laughs> and it's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> mm -mm. There's not one politician that doesn't. Now, honestly, there isn't a lot of people walking around that don't have skeletons in their closet, but mm. these people have some dark shit. And it is just glossed over. You know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Bober, the crazy ones that are, I think, clinically nuts. They are nine times out of ten Republicans, without a shadow of a doubt. The ones with just crazy, not common sense ideas, those are usually the Democrats, nine times out of ten. They're crazy in different ways. One's just not common sense. It's never going to happen unless you somehow brainwash everybody, which I guess I don't put it past them to try to do that. And did then the see, other side— Did we see what Trump just, did? It's possible, y'all. I guess— no, you're just so screwed. I don't even know why we were talking about that, but I have no idea. You, just, you, just go, you, go, you don't go. You go down the rabbit hole. You just start thinking about stuff. You start thinking about society we live in, and you can't help but think of. Unfortunately, a lot of the bad stuff. We're different, right? I think this podcast is different. I think you and I are different, but we we still are Americans. We still uh, fall victim to these things that plague everybody. It just happens to not plague us as much as it seems like most people. I don't know. It's just like, like what do you mean? I, 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 what, what doesn't plague us? Like, oh, Stanley McGregor. <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. Stanley! <laughs> what what plagues us? I, I think the negativity. I have um, definitely gotten negative more. So. See, this podcast used to be, well, I think we were a lot lighter, but it has, uh, it has turned a little more. Sometimes serious, sometimes Melissa Man screaming at clouds. Um, <laughs> and I don't know, you, you'd have to leave a comment. Yeah, people would have to leave a comment. Yes. I think that people that listen to us, they continue to listen to us because it number one, it's unfiltered. Number two, you don't really know what we're going to say. I mean, you certainly don't know what I'm going to say. I feel like you're you always make sense. I edit the shit out of the show so that I make sense. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm not that eloquent in real life. Nor, I mean, even if you listen to our podcast, I'm not that eloquent. But just imagine having to talk to me in real time. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> in awful. real time. <laughs> right, without the... <laughs> That's fucking funny. That's really funny. It's real 
It's, it can be reflective. It's constantly modern, right? We react to what's going on. And within the last two, three years, I, I just think people forget we had Donald Trump as president of the United States for four years. For four years, we had an ex game show host. We had a former real estate guy that got a million dollars from his dad. Different times, then the pandemic. And now the war in Ukraine. So it's like we would be unreal. We would not be authentic if we were still so honky dory. And in our own personal lives have changed. So I think people, they, they listen because there is this consistency of we're going to keep growing with you. I don't think we're different in that regard. I think a lot of people have had a rough last two years, you know, unless you're Megan Thee Stallion, which you just got massively famous and now you're really well off. Yeah, and there's always going to be those people. Billie Eilish, like we're not all Billie Eilish in the last four years, you know. Yeah, but didn't Megan the Stallion get shot in the feet? She did too. So even when you're winning, you're still getting shot in the foot. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, you, can, yeah. you can fucking win. So let's just look at it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's what well, I'm not that rich, but I also didn't, didn't get shot in the flag. So. I haven't gotten shot this last two years. I, you know, it's <laughs> and honestly, with all of the uh, mass shootings here in the U.S., uh, we're going to count ourselves lucky on that. She dances fine. Okay, she's not in a goddamn motherfucking wheelchair. You know, it's just like she was shot in the leg. It's like, yeah, she was shot in the leg. You know After what I mean? She was shot in her feet. Well, she, and yet she's still twerking and dancing. Yeah. So, I, I don't, you know, do I feel bad? I guess. You know, I don't know what you want to say. Go ahead. I'll tell you why people <laughs> like you. It's because you no, look like. Did. No, it's because you look like Bruno Mars. <laughs> Ugh. No, not with high blood pressure. You know, it's funny because, you know, I haven't seen you like in person. I know. I mean, like, years. Like I, I could look like Megan the Stallion and you'd have no idea. I mean, by the way, I do, I do have both my legs, so, you know. Yeah, but dude, she still has her legs, you asshole. She was shot in the feet. <laughs> you know, you only get shot once. She got shot once. She doesn't have gout. I've felt that pain multiple times. So, you know, I beat her on her in that level. I don't hear shit about Megan the Stallion. I don't give a shit about Megan the goddamn Stallion. By the way, I do love Megan the Stallion, though. I mean, her music, I actually really like the music. I like her music. I like Cardi B's music. I like Nicki Minaj. None of them are close to Lil' Kim, though. I love Lil' Kim. I love I Missy Elliott. Lil Kim. Even Eve. Oh, my God. I love Eve. Lil' Kim, I don't know. One of the, besides Janet Jackson, the nip slip, by the way, which probably was besides the Will Smith and Chris Rock situation, was probably the most <gasps> TV moment of at least my lifetime. I'll I mean, I'm not going to include though. 9 11, okay? I'm not going to include 9 11, obviously, okay? Did you actually, yes, now you say that that moment was a, <gasps> but did you actually, during that Super Bowl, see her nipple? Because I was watching it, I did not see it. I thought it was like a star, you know what I mean? Like I thought it was like a like it was ripped off, but I don't I don't remember I seeing nip because I, I didn't see yeah. nip. I'm going to I, 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 I didn't I, yeah, I didn't really see nip. I honestly, didn't know anything was amiss until the next day and I was like, "What? I was watching it." <laughs> I didn't see it. Oddly enough, so many people. I mean, I guess it's because I do love Chris Rock. And Will Smith, you know, I feel like he got into a Scientology. So obviously, I think he's a little crazy. I don't he's think a he's crazy. a Scientologist. Is he a Scientologist? You should look it up in the last year and a half. There's rumors that he's a Scientologist. Regardless, people ask, Will like Monday. Smith. You know, nice. they're like, did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Did you watch? Did you hear? Hear? And I was thinking to myself, so one of the things that I've avoided admitting, so I would say my biggest guilty pleasure I would say it's my only guilty pleasure, quite frankly. I think everything else is like kind of like, you know, somewhat normal, you know, besides marijuana, you know, and that's not, that's so mainstream now. I love award shows, <laughs> you know, like really? the Emmys, the Golden Globes, the Grammy. Of course. Yeah. Like, and, but no one really noticed that. You know, or no one really knows that, right? But why would I tell anybody? Because I'm self-aware enough to know that no one watches them but me. And I'm always shocked that none of them should exist also, by the way. There's no reason. They never award the right person. The, not, the right people are never even nominated. The hosts usually suck. But I always watch them. Why? Probably because there's probably like some type of weird childhood thing that I watched them when I was younger. And it's just like this weird thing that's still in my head. I mean, I assume that's what it is. I would say maybe a more logical reason is because I do keep up with movies. I do keep up with TV shows. I do keep up with music. So it is relative to my interest. So I get that, right? And it's only once a year. It's not like I'm dedicating, you know, every weekend or week doing this, right? But I it's hope like, you would. 
<laughs> so I did watch, but you know, it's funny that you said the Janet Jackson thing because in the moment of watching it, number one, I thought it was like an act. I thought it was like a joke. Right. Oh, he got up there and slapped, and then he starts yelling, and I was like, ooh, like you know, his lips were quivering and shit. I was like, ooh, shit. I don't think that's a joke. You know, I don't think this was a joke. But still, I was like, you know, not that bad. I mean, Chris Rock, he handled it to a professor. He kept the show going on. It's not like they cut away and, you know, the police escorted Will out. It wasn't like this huge thing. So, like, and then he won the award and then he gets up and he's crying, you know, or whatever he's doing. You know, people stood up for him. He got a standing ovation when he gave that speech because in the moment, it seemed like people were not necessarily against Chris, but they were for Will because in that moment, he stood up for his wife. No one was thinking, well, he laughed first. You know, everyone gets the, retrospectively, you were able to pause it. You get to see that he laughed for, you know, I don't remember him laughing at it. You know, I just remember she did not look happy. But then the next day, oh my gosh, people are like really talking about this thing. And then, you know, people get into the argument and, you know, oh, he's a cuck anyway. No one cares about, you know, Chris Rock cross line. And then he gets on these stupid arguments that, you know, we just, yeah. we're just, so, we, we have such a problem with, you know, nowadays. But in the moment, I was like, it's not that big of a deal. And then like the next day, oh, wow, you actually saw something that's probably going to be referenced and played for the rest of eternity. So it's interesting that you say that's a long story, but um, that's what I'm going to go with. Still talking about that damn slap. I gave you three minutes. You could have done this. I know, but I wanted to give you the time. Thanks, Alex. What else is there to say? Cracker Jacks. Ooh, you know, I love Cracker, Cracker Jacks. Jacks. They're now making Cracker Jills. Now, I see Cracker Jill on Twitter trending, right? And I'm like, oh, my God. What what possibly could be called Cracker Jill? I thought it was like this new version of Karen. That Okay, now we're just getting straight racist <laughs> with it. We're on Cracker Jill now. But it turns out it's to honor women in sports. So now you get Cracker Jills. Oh, my God. Well, this is just like that M&M. Remember that M&M, the green M&M or the brown M&M? I don't know which one it yes, was. Yes, they, uh, yeah, they took her <laughs> high heels away. Yes. And then yes. there was Mr. Potato Head and, you know, the, they just get so worked up over that. And they always say, it's not that I'm homophobic. And it's just like, and then there's like a but. And it's like, but I actually am, is what they're really trying to say. If you have to and, clarify that you're not racist or homophobic, <laughs> chances yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah, you exactly. probably are. It's, yes, that's so true. That's what I was thinking. I was just like, unless it's religion. If it's religion, like I'm a home, my own issue, somewhat issue with religions. Depends on what it is. Like I said, if I'm talking to someone that's, uh, it's against my religion to eat meat. And it's like, well, okay. Well, I mean, what am I going to do with that? It's just like, that's you. You do you, dude. I mean, you're not going to eat pork. Okay, you're not going to eat pork. First say, because I'm, I'm very conscious of that, right? Because I can't eat shellfish. I can enjoy a lot of stuff that I used to love because of more of a, I, I hate to say it, it sounds like I'm sick, but like a medical condition. But basically- that's what it, it is, is, right? So, it is. And, but I don't want to say that. It makes me sound like I'm frail and shit, which I'm not. Wow, I got really vulnerable right there. Did you did you notice that? I feel, did you notice? I, I felt like the gravity in the room was like lifting. I was like, oh my god! Like I, I felt like I was facing my own mortality there for a minute. You did I did that was maybe the first time, maybe ever, besides Oof. maybe that crazy shroom trip. Yeah, well, wow. that's another story. Where was I going? Oh yeah, when people say I don't like gays. Because I think marriage is between a man and a woman, you know, that's my religion. And it's like, okay, I totally get that. So you can't say you have a medical condition for that. If that's your justification, if that's your reason, it's like, say la vie, dude. I don't believe in that. I also don't believe when you die, you get 70 virgins. That's just, that's I not what I believe. That's true. I would love if that's true, by the way. I don't know, though. Virgins <laughs> don't know what they're doing. I don't have time in the afterlife to teach people how to have sex. <laughs> Are these like older virgins or younger versions? I need them to clarify. Well, yeah, virgins. Well, I mean, yeah, because they didn't. I mean, this could be like an eighty-year-old woman who just hated life and went to the <laughs> grave never knowing love. And the, the, if that's the fucking virgin I get when I get to heaven, <laughs> do I really want that? <laughs> do you really want that heaven? You know, that also reminds me of this quote that I heard, and it said, "If politicians did ten percent of what they promised, there would be no reason for heaven." I love that quote. That's such a good quote because oh, that's how wow. crazy they fucking are. That's a deep one. You're gonna have to rewind that and listen to that again. That's a good one. <laughs> 